everyone. Lisa Gifford here and Linda Winter. Hi, guys. So, before we start, what do you think? Isn't this gorgeous? This is not throwing up fall. This is Stephanie's gorgeous. <laughs> oh, Zeke, that's perfect. Yes. Isn't that beautiful? Stephanie spent a couple days up here working on this. We did a little bit of the fabric, uh, but Steph this is all Stephanie. Isn't that beautiful? It, it is. And we tried to color coordinate. You did better than I did. My I, call, I called her this morning, so I'm, wear I'm wearing fall. <laughs> well, and I had fall, but the blouse, every time I bent over, was so low that I thought, no, that's not the focus today. But so, she's got some pretty colors. Well, so yeah. But it, anyway, it I'll, another day I'll have my gold fall on and I'll have a piece of lace that I've sewn in. But today is our very first Creating with Martelli. We are so excited that you're here. In a minute, we're going to ask Valerie to tell us who is here. We hope that you found us because this is the first time that we posted here. We are looking forward to doing more of these. We've got an agenda scheduled. We're excited about what we're going to be mm -hmm. showing you. And the whole goal here is to make something, to teach you how to do all of these cool projects yep. with the templates that you might already own. And if you don't own them, then you want to take it advantage and get them too. So project, 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 we'll be showing you how to use the tools, lots of techniques, giving you tips and tricks along the way too. This is really the Lisa show because <laughs> she is going to be doing a whole lot more with our half square triangles and more importantly, the brand new crazy eights. I'm going to be giving you measurements and all kinds of you know, charts and that kind of stuff. So I will post for all of you that said, what size does it start with? What size does mm -hmm. it finish with? And how do you do the eights? And how do you do the fours? And if you want to do twos, I have a chart that I created with Lisa's help. So we're going to be looking at that later and I'll post it on the Facebook page so you can have that. So do not worry about that kind of stuff. So in this today's thing, we don't want to get bogged down with what size, what size, what size? Don't worry. We got all that we'll covered all for chart. you and it's going to be there for you so today take it in learn and if you don't get a question answered you know go back and watch the replay because most likely when you've asked a question especially if you come in a little bit later it's already going to have been answered yeah. probably mm -hmm. so yeah. all right what do you want to say since all I right. chatted well, already? well if you caught the um the so much, so much therapy, therapy yesterday we talked a lot about uh half square triangles where they began looks like sometime back in the mid 1700s is where they started. Martha, Martha Washington, I almost said Martha Stewart. <laughs> Martha Washington actually had designed a block that's actually named the Martha Washington and it's cool. from the 1790s and that. she used half square triangles in it. So one of the things I, I was thinking about in when they were making these back then forever ago, you know, the earliest block was the four patch and the nine patches. Then somewhere along the line decided to cut them in half while I'm sitting there thinking, well, they had scissors and very, very rudimentary, rudimentary tools. basic tools and then they all had to be hand stones hand stitched so they're hand stitching bias yeah you know, if they considered yeah. it or called it a bias or non-bias yeah. back then i don't know but they had to deal with the stretch but anyway Absolutely. I mean, could you imagine it's a whole doing different this now? World. And, and they were, you know, clothes and curtains and blankets mm -hmm. and reused. You know, yep. that's kind yep. of where quilting came from. Let's take some fabric that's beat up and let's yeah. cut it and up. And quilts now, and blankets were a necessity. Yeah. Yeah. Now we take beautiful fabric that mm -hmm. is whole, we cut it up and we stitch it back together. So yep. In, yep. in the past, they did it for necessity. I was reading so. this article about the oldest quilt in America, the oldest one, and it was just it, like you said, a whole cloth. It was a whole cloth just you know, quilted. And I thought, wow, that was, that was pretty cool. It's somewhere Amazing. in Virginia. Yeah. But, yeah. So Valerie, what's going on online? Do we have anybody with us? Absolutely. We got 54 people watching. We're super <laughs> excited. And we've got um, Miss Runyon in the house and Delasio, which I believe is Italian. So I should be able to say that a little bit better. <laughs> uh, we have Miss Withers and we have Miss Gilbert, but we have a Miss Kelly Ann and Miss Kelly Ann is from Massachusetts. Uh -huh. So we, our heart and prayers go out to all the people in New York oh and Massachusetts. Oh, you got what yeah. we crazy. Got. And however, if you could tell us where in Massachusetts you're from, a little quick story, you know that, um, my mom and dad are actually from Massachusetts. My dad was born and raised in Rutland. So our family is still up there. My dad's sister is still up there and we have a lot of family members in Rutland, Worcester, um, so let us know where you're from in Massachusetts. It's always an interesting story. My dad just flew back yesterday, as a matter of fact. All right, Z, Zeke just held up a sign for me, D, D Kirby, who really came up with the Crazy Eights. She made a quilt, we talked about it yesterday, and she sent me that picture. 
I sent it to Zeke. We're going to take a look at that. This is the quilt that had the 678 <laughs> half square triangles, but she used our templates to make this. So it was quick and easy. She didn't have to do any squaring up. Now this is before the border and the binding, I think. So it's just the top. But is that amazing or it what? Is absolutely beautiful. Half square triangles, uh, you know, you guys yesterday that watched so much therapy, you saw the comments and you all commented too. It's such a common standard block. Mm -hmm. It's used in so many quilts, and when you start breaking down block after block after block, there's half square triangles. When you look at quilt after quilt after quilt, it's not only sometimes the starring block, you know, the economy block, the churn dash, the whatever, but it's also borders. Some people even use it for sashings. I wouldn't, but mm -hmm. you could. You yeah. know, so there's so much you can do with a standard half square triangle. What we want to do is show you how to make them better, faster, easier. Mm -hmm. Better usually means harder. And everything about Martelli is better, faster. And easier usually means not that good. And with Martelli, easier means nice, still good, quality, beautiful, yeah. accurate, consistent. Why the no slip material? Why the technology that's built in? So mm -hmm. it's pretty darn cool. So I yep. want to talk about some of the quilt blocks. And Zeke, is everybody saying hi? Is that what that's for, Zeke? So yes, hey guys, we are so thrilled you're here with us for the first time. And 10 o'clock this morning was very <laughs> early for us, so we hope we have some good information. We've got a lot to mm -hmm. show with to yeah, show you today. So. Yeah, we do. Let's take a look right, at some so of the quilt blocks. I'm just going to show you the ones that we had already showed. We showed these yesterday. These were some of the quilt blocks that we had done this week with Nancy McNally. It's an hourglass. Yep, so here's okay. one with... Here and you are can see the, the hourglass. Hourglass triangles, and here's the, yeah. the four patch. And imagine changing out your fabrics. You can do your reds and greens for or Christmas. Maybe flipping you can the twist black it. out and, and yeah. It so the and look. then instead of an hourglass, it's a lava lamp. Yeah. So yeah, lava <laughs> yep. lamp hourglasses. Yep. I love this one. This was part of Nancy's class last week. Just spooling around. But half square triangles, look how simple and easy that is. Okay. You guys, this one here, is that the economy or the churn dash? The churn uh, dash, churn is, dash is right there. This it's is the churn, churn dash. dash. And if you change out, again, coloration makes all the difference. This is where you play with your fabrics. And we'll talk a little bit about designing as well, because that'll make, make a big difference. Um, and then, what is that one? I can't remember. Oh, Somebody shoot. knows out there. Okay, I, I don't remember what that one is. Let me just read through the list that I made. I posted this yesterday, but just when you start looking at all the quilt blocks that you've had in previous quilts, I found Churn Dash, Friendship Star, that might have been the Friendship Star, uh, that was the second to the last one. The, the That one, is that the Friendship Star? Anyway, Friendship Star, the Economy Block, the Economy Block, I, you know, to me, that's such a strange name, but, yeah. you know, it's also kind of a square in a square, which is a patented thing. Shoe Fly, which I love. The Sawtooth Star. A lot of you do Sawtooth, and I actually but the got Sawtooth some more over here. Star, we'll take a look there, too. Bear Paw, the Pinwheel, the Maple Leaf, the Broken Dishes. So, yeah. it's, you know, and the list goes on and on and on. Broken Dishes, 1790s, so, what I found yeah, on that one. such a and cool thing. So, again, the this, Pinwheel, 1790s. just as simple. Let's just pull out, pull out one of your half square triangles we're just taking a half square triangle and turning 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 changing the fabric choices it's just two squares that we've sewn together through the middle cut and then piecing them together so it's just a simple thing pull back a little bit this is here right here what are you trying to show okay right this. there yeah so, so when we look at this if you just look at twisting and twisting and twisting when i taught um my gifted students we learned logo and it was right 90. So any of you that have a programming background, background, right 90, if we turn this right 90, you can see there's our hourglass. But if we turn these around, leave these guys here and turn this a right 90 here and then another right 90, you can see how that block just simply changes. changes and now again. we've got a square that's been pieced. When you're doing something like this, we're doing it on the table. When you're doing something like this, those of you that own these, Put those back on here just so we can do a real quick little we demo have, um, of that. Where I have more up in here, like here's eight of this. These size. are our designer blocks. I did a video on this right after it came out, and it was just one of those hey, this is a cool tool that I didn't get to play with. When you're doing half square triangles, these are going to be so valuable. So now when we turn this, you can see how much easier it is because this is our black material from the templates. We're turning here. But when you're ready to go over to the sewing machine, then we're moving these here 
and this no slip material, let's just say that that's the block that I want. Do you see? I'm moving this around pretty good. Mm -hmm. That no slip material, it's grabbing. If you don't own these already, this is something that you want to take advantage of when we have our sales and we've got a sale going on, the Labor Day sale. The material here, that's the template, that's slippery. And so you can This move is them our around. backing material, the no slip material that grabs. So when you are placing these, and you notice here I didn't line these up on the inch blocks, you can use your inches to line them up. There's grids on here, there's grids on here. This has been burned in with the laser machine. This has been engraved with the laser machine. These are super valuable, 12 inch, 16 inch. Mm -hmm. So we have two different sizes. You decide what works better. If you're gonna work with bigger blocks, this is the way to go. To yep. me, this is just the way to go anyway. Mm -hmm. So even when you're working on a crazy quilt, when you're working on a quilt as you go, when you're working on strip piecing, when you're working on whatever, you have more real estate here to be able to take this yep. to the sewing machine. Absolutely. So these guys are super valuable. When we're talking so design. That's what I like. When I've got a whole block laid out and they're all stacked up, I can have them on this and they're not going to go anywhere. Yeah. And when we're talking design, we've had to cut the fabric, had to piece that together. But this mm -hmm. is where the design book that Zeke and Lisa really spent a lot of time on, this guy. This is where I'm not wasting fabric. I'm not wasting effort. I'm not having to spend that time. This is where you grab your pencils and you start coloring in. Mm -hmm. You can see even on the cover, the half square triangles that are part of certain letters, our W, our S, the M. You can see those are all perfect, Zeke. We've got half square triangles built in. And you just sit there and you color, color, color. If you have a printer, and Zeke's pulled up a page for us, that's perfect. If you have a printer, you can actually do some coloring, then make copies of what you've colored and then cut them up and then start designing too on the design board. We had a question, Valerie? Yeah, so I think we are going to have to go in a little bit of what we discussed yesterday, not take too much time, yeah. but are these different than the half square triangles that we currently have? Yes, absolutely. And my chart, remember when I said don't worry about the details? Let me just show you these two charts. And Zeke does not have this yet. I mean, I just printed it two seconds before we started. So half square triangles. So this chart has our small half square triangles. They are measured or marked with two inches for the smallest one. They finish at an inch and a half. They have the three inch finishes at two and a half. So you'll see there's a chart here. I'm gonna post this on the group or on our Facebook page. So these are half square triangles. So that will give you all those details. When we're looking at the crazy eights, the crazy eights, if you have the half square triangles, you do not wanna regret the purchase because they're gonna be super valuable. But with the crazy eights, we've got another set of options for you too. We have a small set, we have a large set. In the small set, you've got one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half. When you're making eight of them, Lisa will show you that in a few minutes, when you make eight from the one and a half inch, they make eight one and a half inch half square triangles. But if you're just cutting four, then they make two and a quarter. We don't have two and a quarter over here. So that's kind of a cool thing to be able to have more. If you're making two, then we have three and a quarter. We don't have three and a quarter over here. So you've got the ability to make eight half square triangles, four half square triangles, or two half square triangles. This chart is gonna tell you the size that's marked and then the size that'll be finished with the unfinished, unfinished with the unfinished. eights, and then unfinished with the fours and unfinished when you're making two. So it'll make more sense. Again, this stuff I'm saying don't worry about because I will post that. So, okay, yeah. And the website says finished. We're talking unfinished. And I will clarify that before I post it so it makes eight unfinished. Mm -hmm. It's a little confusing with the way we do yeah, they're all unfinished. the templates in general. So, all right, Lisa. Okay, let's pull think, some let's more make, examples. Okay, we'll, we'll pull some more examples right. over. This one I had made with the three and a half inch, so it was the three and a half inch template, so I got eight three and a half inch templates, uh, eight three and a half inch blocks each from each set, from each time I made one. So I did five, I think there's 40 blocks here, and then me and Margo just laid them out, mm -hmm. moved them around, and came up with this simple design by sewing all those perfect three and a half inch um, unfinished half square triangles that we had made from that single template, from that single set of sewing and cutting, 
and just played with them and laid them out. And this is one that I mentioned yesterday. When Lisa was starting to piece them together, this was in a completely different direction and we got a completely different look. Yep. We were talking about it. I said, let's take a picture with the camera. That's what I love about having your phone with the camera. This was already done. We liked this look, but finishing this off here, yep. but imagine turning this, it's a completely different look. So you yeah. can design with the fabric, you can design in the books, you can design on the design of block, and then also once you've laid that out, take a picture of your uh, yeah, take uh, phone. a picture to see if you also like take it. a picture so when you get to the sewing machine, you don't end up making a mistake. Yeah, yeah, yep. absolutely. Right. You want now, this one? I wanted to show this. One. Yes, it, yes, Val. Yeah, uh, Miss Decato. Uh, <laughs> I'm really going to mess up names. Miss Decalio is she was asking a question. Did Stephanie answer that? because I'm not good with links, but were you looking for the product of the design boards that they were using? Design a block, If you could just board. let me know, I know you keep asking the question, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure what you're asking for. So and you Valerie, repeat. if you want afterwards, I'll go post a link for any of the products that we've talked about. So I'll post links for the design of blocks, for the, we have chips that we're not using today, but they're really handy for yeah. this too. We're gonna talk about the metallic pens and how important they are to mark. We're gonna talk about our tweezers. We're gonna talk about our precision scissors. So anything that yeah. we talk about, I'll post a link afterwards. So go back and look at the feed and then I'll post the, I'll make some changes to this once we talk a little bit more and get feedback from you too. And then I'll post all of that information. I'm going to pull this out. This is huge. This is all made with half square triangles. So I wanted you to see it's just a matter of the color. But this was a, a quilt that I had made to cover up a big pole in the building. But every <laughs> bit of it is half square triangles. The whole thing. Half square triangle, half square triangle, half square triangle. It's just a matter of getting your colors and laying them out. This is a really good one to show what design it with the design board. And you know, those of you who like big blocks, well, these these are yeah. these are big and, blocks. And yesterday, people were talking about the large versus the small set, and you know why you would buy one versus another. And most everybody likes to do small, but again, a project like this. K facet fabrics. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a getter dunner and you don't want to spend a whole lot of time piecing, or if you're a new quilter and you're not as comfortable with that perfect quarter inch seam allowance, because that makes a huge difference in the results in your work, that large set might really come in handy. And if you're doing a bed cover, if you're doing a huge table topper, um, you know, not so much a quilt to go on in the top, but just the topper itself. Yeah, here we are, all half square triangles, and it gives that pinwheel look. And what I like about this is just two colors of blue. Mm -hmm. So we don't have tons of fabric choices. Just two pieces of fabric gives you a half square triangle. Mm -hmm. Now this one doesn't have as many half square triangles in it. They mixed it in with other blocks, like which I believe is flying geese in here. But here's half square triangles. Like right here, I'm gonna guess, I guess I get this where Zeke can. So like this one here is half square triangles, one, two, three, four. Then you've got flying geese on the edges, and then you've got the half square triangles in the corner. So this is intermixing it with other blocks to give you another look. This one here is the standby old block, the churn dash, with a pinwheel in the middle. So I really thought this one was really beautiful. And could you imagine, like we talked about yesterday, and so many different colorways. I love the soft colors. I mean, in this reds one. and greens, Easter, you know, if you've got a new baby, you know, this would be such a cute baby quilt, mm -hmm. you know, and have your fabrics with little bunny rabbits yeah. or little whatever, Peter Pan or whatever So anyway, it is. That's, that's just the idea of showing you that one. I wanted to show this one too, because this is showing using the actual half square triangles and using it as one of your borders that they yeah. used it right here, bordering, bordering this block right here. This is probably a whole block right here with a separate block right here, but I just really like how you could use half square triangles as just the whole border going around a quilt or a panel or something that you've made. And this one here was a That's block that I had designed. Did, did we decide that this was a sawtooth? I'm not quite sure. Yeah. I had started with an eight and a half inch block and then I just figured out the dimensions of what I needed for my half square triangles. And I got eight going around of each one, and then I've got the corner blocks to make this big block right here. And the one thing I love about this is if you've got a fabric that has a, a motif, if you're doing sports, if you're doing any kind of a, um, 
a, a collegiate kind of a theme, or if you're doing um, anything that has Mickey Mouse or yeah. you know whatever, you want to have right? a fabric that has a focal that you yeah. want to fussy cut. And that that's out. where you would use our square templates with a fussy cut frame. So yeah. this, you know, you've got the. Um, the flamingos on yep, here, but that flamingos. can be anything. It can be, again, a holiday theme if you want, but if somebody has a particular, even an ABC a quilt. A photo. I so, mean, if oh, you yeah. want to do a photo a memory quilt, quilt, that would be A wedding for that. quilt, mm -hmm. an anniversary quilt, this would be great for that, too. Yep, so, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk about... Um, let's talk, oh, about, let's talk about the marking pens, because this is, this is going to be important. You're going to need to want to mark your templates, particularly if you're going to use them for the additional sizes that I've kind of discovered yeah. out. So I'm going to pull this over and let you get this in the so sweet spot. So for half square triangles, you know, they've got one marking on here and the same thing with the Crazy 8s. There's one mark on here. We sell both the silver and the gold metallic. I like silver to mark, but both of them will show up. And all we're going to be doing is just following along and take your time more than I am, but follow along so you can see what those are. I want to be able to grab based on these and not have to spend any time. It's easy to see this is smaller than this, but I want to be able to see my twos, my threes. Now, let's grab one of the crazy eights and talk about the markings there and how okay. we've come up with those numbers. And this was an aha that Lisa had to be able to say, they're not just crazy eights, mm -hmm. but they're crazy fours, whatever the crazy we want to call it, and twos. Yep. So the five. So this five makes eight five inch unfinished, unfinished blocks it makes eight now you see this number right here the seven and a quarter this one was done that if once i cut this out instead of drawing my lines here and here i just don't do any of the lines i sewed all the way around the edges a quarter of an inch all the way around my two pieces of fabric and then i'm cutting it catty corner catty corner and it gives me four Unfinished. Seven, unfinished seven and one quarter so if you needed to trim it up you could get it to a seven if you fudge this by maybe doing a scant quarter you might be able to get it up to a seven and a half now this one this ten and a quarter where this one came from so if I wanted to just sew make two I can make two I can make eight four the ten and a quarter means I can make two and what would I do is I have my fabric here and I'm just drawing a line on just one of these. And then sew in those lines just like the regular half square triangles and then cutting in the middle. And then when I pressed them open, they measured 10 and a quarter. There's not really much fudging that you can do. It's going to be 10 and a quarter. So it would make, you know, you could trim it down to a 10 inch. 10 inch. And yeah. that larger one that we had mm -hmm. that you said needed to be a large one, that's where this would really come in handy. Yeah, so, yeah. so let me show you on the chart where we're looking. That was the five inch that we have here. And I know it's hard to see here, but the five inch, that's the template, what's marked on the template. If you're making eight, you're going to get five inches unfinished, eight, eight of those. If you're going to be cutting four of them, then you're well, going to get... That's why you're sewing around the outside and doing a cross yeah. and, cut. And Lisa will do that in a few minutes, so you'll mm -hmm. get to see that in action. If you're going to make four, then you're going to get seven and a quarter. If you're going to make two, then you're going to get ten and a quarter. So we've done the work for you. This will be posted. And again, I'll write unfinished up here so it'll make more sense. But this chart will be yep. there for but I want you. To show, I wanted to point out that six because yesterday somebody had commented, well, how do we get them bigger because these crazy eights only go up to six and our half square triangles only go up to, to uh, eight to, nine to go nine. up to nine all right so if you do that four and a half one of the crazy eights and just make it two it's going to make a nine and a quarter but if you grab that five which we have here which i'm using right here it will make two ten and a quarters or two ten inches or you could square it down to nine and a half the five and a half not only makes the eight, five by five and a half, it'll make four, eight inch, but it'll make two, 11 and a quarter inch triangles. And that six, again, will make your eight, six inch ones, four, eight and five eighths. But here's what I love, because I love big blocks. I know. I can make two, 12 and a quarter inch blocks. By that just means you could square that down two. to 12 inches. You can and that's down huge. To 12 inches. Yeah. yeah. Now, so again, this chart will be there for you, so we don't want you to worry about that. But you had a cool trick that you figured out this morning. Yep, I figured that out. If, if you 
don't have the chart and you do get these and you didn't get the chart or you I can't found, find the chart so I, I you make them all yourself make make this the crazy four if you want to call it the four at some point so that you can you know see based on what your seam allowance is but I found that if I took this template and I measure this template and it measures um, 10 and 3 quarters, right? 10 and 3 quarters. This template from corner to corner is 10 and 3 quarters. So just subtract a half inch from that, and that's where it's going to give you the 10 and a and quarter. quarter. Pretty that's, cool. That you know that you can make two 10 and a quarter inch blocks with. So you can take any of the Crazy 8 templates, measure from edge to edge on one side, and then subtract half of an inch. And that's where you're going to make the two. What it's going to make for two. Yeah. We're not, we're not selling these as a template to make two half square triangles, we're selling them as crazy eights because it's faster and they're still accurate. Mm -hmm. They're easier, they're still consistent. There's no squaring up if you don't want to. You can square mm -hmm. down if you want to get them smaller, but it's a cool bonus. Yeah. It really is a bonus. So again, if I was going to just make the two, say with this one right here, I would just have this on my fabric. I've got my two layers of fabric right sides together. I would cut all the way around it and I would just draw this line or just this one. I would just choose a side, choose two, and I would just do those and then I would sew those lines. Now if I'm doing four, I'm going to not draw any lines. I'm going to cut all the way around and then I'm just going to take it and I'm going to sew a quarter inch all the way to the outside edges and then do my cross cuts. Yeah. The Crazy Eight's a little bit different. We got to draw every one of these lines and do our registration marks. So I'm going to show you, should I just go ahead and show them how well, to do that? Well, let's talk marking oh, yeah, first. Because markings. we need to let you know, this marking right here is the only mark that's going to be on the template. Yeah. So you're going to get this and it'll say two, three, four, five, five and a half, whatever it is, whichever one. Mm -hmm. So we're putting that on there. So this is on there for you. You've got to write these markings. You've got to write these markings. That's where that chart and this metallic marker will come in handy. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna say five. It's gonna say, do we have another one we can grab? Um, um, yeah, grab one of the other templates. It'll say, I hate to say, mess up your stack. So this four. is gonna say just four. That's the only thing that's gonna be on there. What we've done is done the work for you, the five and three quarters, the eight and a quarter. But because these are crazy eights, they're meant to make eight of them at a time. These aren't engraved on there. These aren't engraved on there. But mm -hmm. that's where that chart will come in handy. And um, you'll be able to find that online. Okay. And, um, and I'll see if we can put it on the website yeah. too. Okay. okay, now let's talk about the registration marks. Okay, the registration marks. These are very important. Every one of them has these little holes that are drilled in. So you have to be able to get your pencil in there to mark your dots like you're going to do at all four spots because that's going to do your cross cuts, not your angled cuts, but your cross cuts. So I recommend that you get some scissors or some sharp or something tweezers and go in from the back side and you're going to kind of just push that through on all of them. You've got to get that opened up so that your lead or your marking pencil or your tool is going to be able to get through all of that to be able to mark. Now we just had a question. How many can you cut out at a time? How many layers of How fabric? How many layers of fabric? But if you're doing half square triangles and you're having to mark that fabric, you can only cut out two at a time. Two layers you, of fabric. Yeah, two layers of fabric because you're, you're light or you're dark because if you do more than that, then you can't get all your markings on yeah. there. However, <laughs> However, if you're going to be doing the crazy four, you could put a stack of fabric under here and then just lay them up two pieces together because you're not having to draw or mark anything. You're just sewing the two pieces together a quarter inch all along the outside edge. That's pretty so, cool. So yeah, you would be able to yeah. put a whole stack of fabrics together and just have your two layer together and be able to make your crazy fours. Yeah. But if you're doing an eight or if you're doing just two, you can only have two layers of fabric done at a time. As all half square triangles, because you've got to draw your line on one of them. On the old fashioned way, we were drawing our line and then we are sewing a quarter inch on each side. That's well, hard. this one here is that guesswork is taken away. You don't have to worry about that because you're drawing the lines that you're actually sewing on. Yeah. So you don't have to guess. It's going to be consistent every single yeah. time. It's a whole, lot of, a whole lot easier to stitch on an accurate line than it is to draw a line, measure, 
and then that measured line stitch on it. And yeah, that's been the traditional line. way. Yeah, so. that's been the traditional way. All right, so we hope we haven't made you crazy with the crazy eights, but the possibilities here are just huge. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to get into cutting oh. and sewing. Yeah, I'm going to show them, you know, I already had done all these. This is where, this is where I was just testing and figuring them out. So this one was here was the one and a half inches. And here's my two and a quarters of the of the of the um, of the four. So I was making all of these last night, so or yesterday afternoon, so that you could see them. This one here is with the twos, and these all measure out at three inches. The dog ears are not removed. You still have to take the time to trim off all of your dog ears, but they come out perfect every single time. This one's supposed to be a three, and if I lay this on here, it's right on the money as a three. But if I was to do the crazy eight with this two, they'll be right on the money, perfect two inches. So I'm going to set those aside. Now I want to show you something else. So this one here makes eight two and a half inch um, unfinished. unfinished. So here's where I've got the three and five eighths for this one right here where I can get four and that's what I have right here. Four and three, five, three and five eighths. If I needed to square this up to three and a half, there's two different ways of doing it. If you have our three and a half inch template, then you're just gonna set it on here and you're gonna match up this point into this seam and this point into this seam. So you're just gonna lay it on here and you're gonna match up those seams. And this is where I'm gonna get it to where it's gonna be a squared up three and a half inches. So you see, I'm just cutting off a sliver because it came out at three and five eighths and I needed it to be, say, three and a half. So then I would just trim it up all the way around. So that's one way to do it. And that's if you have already pressed open your block. Now, say you haven't pressed it open yet. This is the block as it came off, as I cut them off, and they haven't been pressed open. And I need it to be also three and a half. Another way that you could do it is that you can just take your template, and I'm going to flip this over on the red so you can see yeah, a little better. Too hard on that so there's my see. sew line. See my sew line right there? That's important. So I'm going to take the same two corners that I would have done where I would have laid it onto the template where it's opened up, and I'm going to set this corner on that sew line and I'm going to set this corner on that sew line. So I'm going to be lining them up onto the sew lines. So now instead of having to cut all four sides, I'm going to cut the two sides off, but I'm also at the same time getting my dog ears off. That's if you haven't pressed it open yet. So my dog ears are removed. I've trimmed up all four sizes. So now when I open this up, it's going to measure three and a half inches right on the money. Isn't that cool? I've got it pressed open. So there's, if you have our blocks, these are perfect for squaring up, but they're also perfect for if you don't have your blocks opened up, you can easily yeah. just match up your sew line onto the corners of the block and then trim it up and yeah. get your uh, dog ears cut off at the same time. And we've got a question? Yeah, so Miss Heather says she's a visual learner. Hey, can Heather. you show how the fabric lays before cutting? Show how the fabric lays before cutting. How the fabric sure. lays What's before cutting. I'm not sure. Uh, these, these right here, the, these? Like right sides to right sides. Oh, right, okay. So yeah. if I'm going to use, say I'm going to cut out my, I'm going to use this one, I'm going to cut eight, I'm going to make eight five inch squares. So I've got my fabric laid out, I put my dark one on the bottom, right side up. Then I got my other fabric, I placed it down, right side down. So you're sandwiching your, your right sides together. And I chose the lighter fabric because I've got to draw my lines on this yeah. one. And also, it's just easier to see when you're cutting. Yeah, if you've got a dark see. fabric, like the black fabric and the red, it's hard to see the black fabric yeah. and the black Because if template. I have a dark fabric like this and I'm going to put my tap, it's going to be hard for me to see my stitch sew lines. lines. So Stitch lines, yes. Yeah. So I'm going to just flip it over. I've got my fabrics right sides together and I've got my template laid onto here. So if I was going to go ahead and get this all set up to make a crazy eight, you got two ways. You can go ahead and cut it all the way out, but don't lift your template. And I think that's what the instructions say to do. Go ahead and cut it out, but don't lift up your template. Or you could go ahead and mark your lines and then cut it out. It's whatever you prefer to do. So just get all of your registration dots. And I just kind of drop my pencil down in there and I just kind of twist it around just a little bit. It's just to make sure I got all those spots done. 
Then with my pencil, my marking tool, what you're using, I'm going to draw a line on the inside, outside, on each one of these. I don't even know what they're called. These spaces here. Registration marks. Yeah, registration spaces. And you're going to do it, it on each, on all four on both sides. You don't have to do this right here, this right here, because you're just going to do this long edge and this long edge, this long edge, this long edge. And I find it's better if I start from the middle and I go out because I feel like I'm pushing the fabric more if I'm pushing it in. So I like starting from the middle. Yeah and working out, middle and working out. And also, depending on the tool you're using, if you've got something that's got a fatter mark, yeah. you can angle by accident too much so that you're not yes. getting that true you, marking. You don't want so, to go underneath the browning. You want it to be right there on the edge of the browning. Yeah. So if you're saying that it's not consistent from here to here or here to here, then that's you. Make sure so, that you're not making your lead or whatever marking tool that you're using angling underneath there. You don't yep. want that. You want it to just be right there along the edge here and or here. I've, I've seen our sales reps, when they were first learning about this, they'd have it a little bit further away. Then and that's so going to that be too was, narrow. So they were doing it like narrow. straight so, down and, and you've yeah. got to be, you got to have it where you're going right along the edge of that browning. So that's watch your consistency. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want that. Or angling in the you opposite yeah. direction either. You know, you these markings. You want to just get your line yeah. and your line. Yeah. And again, the markings are here for consistency, for mm -hmm. accuracy. So your markings don't, are going to be what you're using. Don't do this. For, yeah. Don't shove it down underneath there. You're going to just kind of have your line just going down like this. And you can even see on the other the side, side, you can see on here when you were showing it, see how these lines here? Right here. Do you uh, see how these lines is, are consistent? Yeah, because, because you changed the I angle. I changed the angle. So but that's, I'm make that's right. what you want to avoid. So by Lisa demonstrating that, do you see how that can be off? Like if you was to have it like this and I drew my line. Yeah, look at that. That's huge. That's going to be a huge mess up right there. So everything about the templates gives us accuracy, consistency when you're using them accurately, consistently. Mm -hmm. So check your registration marks that you're putting on here to make sure that you're drawing consistently. Yeah. yeah. All right. So once you have all of your lines marked, you're just going to go ahead and just cut all the way around. And that's the joy of having these <laughs> get a grip on here it just holds it and rotates it around yep. so now I'm going to lift it up and I want you to see I probably got all kinds of crazy lines yep. because I was angling <laughs> it in funny ways but I know it's going to be my darker lines that's what I'm looking for now there's going to be this little space right here you can take a ruler or something that you can line up those lines if you like you needed to line up those lines you can line up those lines I usually just eyeball it and so across here so across here, so across here. Now, if I was going to do just the crazy four, I wouldn't have drawn any of these lines. I would just cut this out like this, and then I would sew a quarter of an inch right here, all along the edges, a quarter of an inch. And then I would do my cross cut here to here. All right, so the next thing is you just take this to the sewing machine, and you're gonna sew all of these lines and I actually have one sewn right here. So this is it completely sewn. You just sew all the way across. Now this is one of those ones where a rotating mat would work very very well for you. So let's go over to the ironing station because I got that all set up over there. I've got the Martelli um, roundabout. roundabout with me and I'm using the larger one for this one. Now, one thing that I like to do after I have got it sewn, before I do my cutting, is I press it. And I also forgot one more thing that I also like to do. After I have drawn my lines, before I've even sewn it, grab me uh, my pins, um, before I even sew it, after I've drawn my lines, but it hasn't yeah. hit the sewing but machine. This is critical. This is very important so that your fabric doesn't shift because I don't care how hard you're going to hold it, sometimes that fabric, particularly with that slippage that happens underneath by the feed dogs, it can cause your fabric to shift just a little bit. So it doesn't take no time to just take a minute and in between this space right here where you're not going to be sewing, stick a little pin right here. It's actually in the instructions. 
just drop a pin in here just to keep it from shifting before you do your sewing. You're going to do it on all four. It's just going to keep everything more stable. Then once you get done sewing, I take out my pins. I come over to my iron before I even do my cutting. I go ahead and give it a press. What I like to do is what I'm, do what I'm doing here is I am setting that thread into that fabric. It's just setting it in there. It's making it a part of the fabric. Just get it just nice set in there. Doesn't take long, just, just a quick hit with it. So then being that this is a project that is perfect for your roundabout or a rotating mat is because when you're doing your cutting, you're going to cut here, you're going to cut here, but you're also cutting here and here because that's where those registration marks were so important. So got your ruler, find a ruler that's long enough to go all the way across. And if you don't have a ruler that's like I had one that was shorter for those huge blocks, I just cut and then brought my ruler up and then cut the rest of the way across. So I'm just angling my ruler from corner to corner. Just to get from the point to point, corner to corner. Got it centered onto my mat. And then all I'm doing is I'm just gonna do my cut. i get this a little better. And of course, if you're using the Marcelli rulers, you just don't wanna just pick it up. You kinda of wanna gently pick it up so nothing shifts and moves on you. Rotate it around, everything is still in place. Line it up, I like going from one corner and just kind of holding it up so I can kind of pivot just a little bit and then I'm dropping it down onto the other corner where nothing has shifted or moved on me. Then do my next cut. Again, gently pick it up so nothing shifted or moved. Now we're going to look at these registration marks. You got one, two, three, four. So now you're going to line it up on one. I like to go like I'm taking that little dot and I'm slicing it in half. And as minuscule as it is, that's what I'm doing. I'm slicing that little dot in half, bringing it over, kind of holding it down on one edge so I can have a little bit of a pivot here. And then I'm dropping it down on the other side so I could slice that dot in half. And you're gonna see when it slices that dot in half, it's gonna go right through the center right here. It's gonna slice right through those points. Carefully lift it, nothing has shifted. If it has, you're gonna just kinda of get it right back into place. I like lining up my sew lines. Another turn, and the same thing. I'm looking at my dot. So I can slice it in half, kind of pivoting it and dropping it down. It's going to slice that little dot in half. And then do my final cut. And that's all there is to it. So now I've got eight. And of course, need a sharper blade, right? Of course. Lisa said, Lisa said beforehand, we need to change the blades I need blades to change sometime. some blades. <laughs> Okay, so then I like, I like stacking them all up in the same orientation because when I go to iron them, I want all my darks up or, so that it's easier for me to just iron them up. So I'm just laying them out. Just like that. Now for ironing these, one thing I loved about this Crazy 8 is that you do not have any biases right here. It's all straight grain on the edges. If you do the crazy fours, yes, you're going to have biases on your edges on the crazy four. If you do the, just the two at a time, you don't have any, I don't think you have any biases on the twos, right? I think on so. the single twos. I don't think so. But I know, yes, somebody commented, oh, you're going to be having biases. Yes, you do or have biases, fours. of course. But that's why but we if have you're just starch. Very, that, that's, <laughs> Like I starch everything, so I'm, I'm a big fan of starching everything. So biases have never really affected me that much when I'm, when I'm doing sewing, but not to say that sometimes having a little bit of bias is good. Like if you remember when I did, when I first designed the, um, uh, what is it, that my thing that I did this summer, the, um, no, no, my wall hanging, the hummingbird, Your hummingbird? Hummingbird, the hummingbird, okay. and I did the, um, the, the ribbon, the ribbon, mm -hmm. the ribbon. 
I had designed that block because I wanted my biases on the edge, so I had a little bit of a give. So sometimes biases are good, so you have a little bit of give when you're trying to feed something in. Okay, so now I gotta press, press these open. So here's where, again, we'd already set the seam, right? You could carefully just go ahead and peel these back and kind of give it a finger press and tap it, because, but I still like to warm up that fabric just a little bit. So I like tapping it again, just to warm it up a little bit and then I'm just kind of pushing it back. You very gently are pushing it back. Even though you don't have any biases here, you do have some bias here. So you do not want to distort it in your pressing it back. So just be very gentle and press it back. And I like to use a dry iron. And when I feel I've got it nice and set, I can hit it with some steam. But I also found this is where I like to use my amazing um, seam press because it makes everything nice and flat and crisp for me. So again, I like to warm it up just a little bit and then just kind of roll it back. Let the toe of the iron just kind of push it, but not push it too hard. And then I'm pressing it with the grain of the fabric, either this way or this way. I'm not rolling it all over. And I pick it up and I lay it. I can just kind of let these just stack up underneath the seam press. You could warm it up a little bit this way, fold it back with your fingers, kind of give it like a finger press here, and then hit it with your iron, whatever you want to do. And then again, I like to move with the grain of the fabric so I'm not distorting that crease. Look how gorgeous these blocks are. I know, they're gonna be fun. <laughs> I had to do fall colors, right? <laughs> Yep, we didn't have enough fall already. <laughs> I know, we need some more fall. <laughs> well, it is, it is hot here in Pensacola, so we are not in the mood for fall yet, so we can at least be in the mood with fabrics. <laughs> oh, I know. So I've got six of these now done. These, here, I got a whole stack of them that need to be ironed. So this is just showing again, I love warming up my fabric just a little bit so it just rotates back just a little bit better. Of course, you're still going to be left with all these dog ears, so you're just going to have to take your precision scissors and just trim them down. So can I mention something about the turntable while you're pressing? Yes. All right, so Lisa didn't take advantage of the measurements on the turntable. I and if not. you're comfortable with our rulers, with our rotary cutters, with our templates, then you don't have to. But if you aren't, let me just show you on here the measurements that you can take advantage of, especially when you're doing the registration marks. Because these registration marks, you know, she did the bring the ruler down. And notice what I'm but doing, I could I'm kind of them scooting up. it. Yeah. I hold this down and I'm gonna put pressure here and I bring that down and I'm looking at my line. And I don't know if you saw, my fabric moved. So when I position this, I'm <laughs> lining up, I'm lining up. I bring that ruler down, I hold this and I bring this down and I'm looking at my line here. And if I hold here where my fabric is not caught underneath, I'm gonna mess it up so you can see. Do you see I'm lined up here, but I'm not lined up here? So I hold this down and I lift this up and I reposition. So these marks that are on the turntable, notice I held down here and I lifted this up. Take advantage of the turntable. This guy is loose for a reason. We want it to be easy to turn when you cut. You don't want to fight with, that temp uh, with the turntable, but if you have to put a pinky here or a pinky, you can't see, but my pinky is on the work surface. Now we're working on the ironing mat. You don't normally cut on the ironing mat, but that's because we wanted to take advantage. So you can use the markings that we have on our turntable. We've got angles here, our 45 and our 60 degree, but I'm really looking at my dots here, my dots here. We want to line those up if you're not confident. It's a matter of your skill, of your ability, of how comfortable you are with this snow slip material. And we're working with a fairly large block. When you're working with smaller blocks, you're going to be working a little bit differently. So being able to take advantage of these marks, because we've got the red marks right here, you can see reds equal my inches. They uh, signify my inches. My dotted lines, that's my half inch. My aqua lines that are here, that's my quarter inch seam allowance. When you look at all the marks, 
markings on here, we've got a lot of information that really is helpful. My 45 degree, my 60 degree, left-handers, right-handers, we've got all those marks on there for us. And notice when I put this on here, I can't see my 10. I can't see my eight, but I can go right up here. And if I want to put a mark on here, I can take a pencil and put a mark. If I was doing something smaller and I wanted to square this down, pretend we're not doing half square triangles, but if I wanted to square something down to six and a half, here's my six, there's my half, I could put a pencil mark there. So when I line that ruler up, I've got a pencil mark for me to position my ruler. And I'd have a pencil mark down on the other end as well. And then you can erase that afterwards. So the turntable is so valuable for the markings. Just like our mats, the turntables are accurate and consistent too. We've got registration marks here, so you don't have to. Lisa had it cockeyed. You don't need to yeah, use. Yeah, you don't have to do that. You don't have to, <laughs> but again, knowing that the turntable is there for us to take advantage of those yeah. markings too makes a difference. And if you look here, you can see I've got a 10 and a quarter on here, and we've got, there's my 10, and I still have a little bit more that I could play with so we could have a block a little bit bigger than this so yeah so, all right <laughs> so well I was just sewing away yep Val can you get a little close up could you please bring that over to the cutting table and put that in the sweet spot so Z could get the turn a table or I mean the cutting table where you can put on that sweet spot they want to see the holes they would like to get a little bit close up of the um, dots so of the, the dots, the on, dots the, on the fabric or the dots on the templates? I believe that's what they're asking, yes. Okay. Okay, we'll do both. Okay. All right, so I've got the turntable here. We've got a registration mark that Lisa made. Boy, that's hard to see. Right here, and there's a registration mark. I'm going to go in with the marker just to highlight these a little bit. But when you're looking at it, you can see just fine. These are, and Nancy talked about it in the class last week. We want the registration marks for us, not for a camera, but for us to be able to see. So I've gone in and colored it with the silver and it kind of blends in as well. So registration marks. Let me grab the template. I'm gonna show you from the backside because when you get the template, this is solid brown. And just like Lisa said, grab something sharp. You know, you can grab a knitting needle. You can grab the... I think they were wanting to see the, the dots on the cutting mat. Oh, on the turntable? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, good review of this. So let's take a look here. All right. So when we look, right, where is Zeke? Boy, where am I? Follow. Okay, right over here. Do you see? So I mentioned the red marks. So let's look at the 10. Okay. So here's my 10 and here's my 9. So we can see here. Okay. So we're looking at actually not 10 or 9, but here's an inch mark. Here's an inch mark. These dots, they look very different than every other line there. And that's for a reason, half inch. I wanna be able to look at solid reds as my inches, my dots as my half inches. These guys here, the solid aquas, those are my quarter inch seam allowance. What do quilters live and breathe by? Quarter inch. When I talked about doing six and a quarter, six and a half, we're gonna take advantage of those marks. But you can see, we've got a great shot here to see those dotted lines there represent the half inch marks. So those are there for a reason. So when you are working on other blocks especially, again, when you're doing half square triangles, it's built into the template. The template has done all the work for you, but if you're just wanting to square up, if you are going to be working on some other design, then the turntable, especially when you're doing one after another after another, and you've got to cut aside, 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 being able to cut, rotate, cut, rotate, cut, rotate. So those marks really come in handy for you. And if you have not used our turntable, we've got lots of videos out there for you on the turntable that give you more details. But I can promise you if anybody owns a turntable, if they make a comment about it, it's going to be amazing. You need to buy it. If not one, buy another, another, another because some of us are lucky enough to have stations. You know, you can have one next to your sewing machine. And we have the wool pressing mat. We have a yellow pressing mat. We've got the no slip round if you're gonna use the wool because this separates. So no slip material on the back, this is our base. And I'm always amazed when somebody gets it at home and they've been using it this way, woo, all over the place. Do you see this velvety surface, this grabs your surface? And you're not ever gonna press on top of a cutting mat, by the way. So this is your base. We've got a huge base at 16 inches, the no slip material. 
I talk about north, south, east, west. I'm feeling here, I'm feeling here, I'm feeling here, I'm feeling here. I want to have it centered. I'm going to uncenter it so you can see what I mean. When I place this along, do you see how I have more brown under my chin than I do at my waist? So when I place this down, finger, 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 I want to position it so that turntable top is centered on the bottom. Because when we're turning this, I want a smooth glide. If it's off a little bit, when it turns, it's going to be off a little bit. You know, the access is off. So cutting base, cutting top. We have an ironing top with this. It's the yellow Martelli fabric. I love using our wool uh, pressing mat. We make that in a round as well. And we have the no-slip material as well, Did too. Did you tell them about Lisa, the other size doing? that we have? So we have, we two have sizes. a smaller size, Yeah, you want to pull too. that one? Yeah, let me grab. And Lisa, are we ready to move on to the next? Yep, I'm finishing three more. All right, so then my we're base, play. I don't see the turntable base, but this is our little travel companion. This is our little going to a friend's house. The largest block you can do on here is a six and a half inch, so I don't have as much work surface. So the cutting top, imagine the cutting base. We have a cutting base that goes with this. And then this is the iron top here. You don't ever iron on top of here. You'd be ironing you know, on top of here. So, and that no slip material that we sell, we sell this stuff in just a circle too. So, all right, didn't want to take away time, but I wanted to make sure y'all knew about that. Yeah, so I got, got these all pressed and we could do some playing with some of the layouts. If you, how, how do y'all feel? Y'all want to see a little bit of a layout play with these? See what we could do. I'm gonna pull all these out of the way. So we could lay it out right here on the, I don't, the, I don't know if that's going to be big it's enough. It's not going to be big, big enough. Blocks, this is going to be blocks. perfect for your one and a half, your two and a half, your twos, your threes, your three and a halfs. So again, well, you know what would be interesting? That one paper that talked about broken dishes, right? The, is it the broken dishes I think we should... Let's look at the, let's, let's show making a I mean, broken we, dish. You know, layout. here's the thing. We could do a pinwheel. We could do yep. broken dishes. Yep. We could do an economy. We can do everything. Yep. Val? Yeah, Heather wanted to know, she's a visual learner. She said, can you show me how the fabric lays before cutting? We, we covered you that. You did that one? Yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah. yeah, right sides together, just flat. And I recommend before you even do any of your cutting with anything, uh, please iron your fabrics prior to cutting, cutting. Yeah, because sure. if you go to iron your fabrics after you've cut yeah. it, before you go to sew it, it might change the distortion, particularly if you go to starch it, it oh, might yeah. draw it in. So be sure to do all of your pressing and ironing before you start doing all of your cuttings of whatever of your blocks that you're going to be doing. Huge. Absolutely. Huge. Yeah. All right. So here's a whole bunch. I think I got at least 40 of them here. <laughs> so we could design anything right here. This is where having the design table or design wall that you might have or just anything that you'd want to do. But again, just by changing the look of what you're working with, if I wanted to have more of that chevron look, then I can have it doing the chevron. Let me see, I got, you just got to keep turning them. You got to keep turning them to get that, to get that different look that you want. Now, when you're playing with, um, other fabrics when you're pulling other colors and that's where you can get more designs in there so here i'm just laying some out i don't have any of these dog ears trimmed off there it is it is what it, it is what it is so this is where i'm just pulling this one in and pulling that one in just nope, that's not going to work let's go back to here and i'm just building it out i'm going to have this one here again you're just turning and putting them into whatever position that you want them to be to get a really pretty, pretty look. And I hear constantly from people, do you have a pattern for that? Do you have a pattern for that? Um, you know, there are lots of patterns out there and you'll see mm -hmm. patterns for the turn dash or for the economy block or for whatever. But I love this, the just creating and seeing what looks good to my eye. So you don't have to have a pattern. If we're doing a table runner, if we're doing placemats, if we're doing a table topper, Whatever it is you're doing, you don't have to follow a pattern. You can, again, use your camera, use whatever it is that you have that works for you to be able to see what do I like, what's mm -hmm. visually appealing to me. Yeah. So that's, that's all I'm doing. I'm just laying them out here and seeing if I like the look that it's going so far. And again, taking a picture afterwards because I'm looking at, yeah, good. I was yeah, going to say, that one's gotta go. I'm looking at 
Okay, good. Is that, is that right? And you can yep, see. This one's wrong. And here, this one's wrong. So when we, if we're going to replicate this, do you see, if we had a camera, we'd be able to see, yeah, <laughs> actually it's, no, we're good. Uh, so and now I have to look like, are so we? So is this one wrong? So, <laughs> no, that was, I think that was right. Are we doing a W? Are we going to do a big W? I anyway, think you get the idea. Down. This to me is the fun of playing with fabric and deciding what do you want to be the star? Do you want the sunflower fabric to be the star? Do I want to have some kind of a pattern where they're looking at it far away and seeing, here's a quilt block, here's a quilt block, here's a quilt block. Or do I want to see zigzags, you know, or just a chevron design? So mm -hmm. that's the fun of it. Yep. All right, so you guys, we could go on and on and on. We could yep. sit at the sewing machine and piece this, but you get the idea. What I want to remind you of is crazy eights give you, like Lisa did, eight blocks, eight half square triangles. You can take those same crazy eights and create four too. blocks. You can yep. take those same crazy eights and create two blocks. So the crazy eights are big time versatile. The half square triangles that you have they give you half square triangles. Again, you're not wasting your money if you own the half square triangles because the sizes that you get are not going to be all duplicated. You've got a ton of options with these. Yep. I that think we need to do a four this to show four. them how to do the four because nice. we've talked about it, but let's do the four. All right, I'll do a four real quick because I've already got one sewed. So this is where I did it with the four and a half inch template. So this would have made eight, four and a half inch, unfinished squares and I believe that's what these are right here one two three four and a half so these are the eight four and a half inch squares so if I would have done it in the the way this template was designed eight right here but if I want to make four blocks by doing the outer edge right here that's what this one is right here so I've already cut out the fabric all the way around it and draw any lines and then I sewed it a quarter of an inch all the way around and that's what you could see right here. And sewed you had mentioned that if you around. wanted to you could cheat and do a scant quarter of an inch seam allowance here. You could do a here. scant quarter of an inch if I wanted to try to get it up to six and a half but I believe this came right out at six and a half. I want yeah, to make sure one, two, three. Yeah this one came out at six and six, six and five eighths but you trim it down here. just a little bit. Yep. So if you probably do a little bit of cheating on this one if I needed it and I think I did this one with the scant the scant quarter gave me more of that six and a half a full quarter probably gave me more like a six and a quarter but this one here is just showing what you do you just sew it all the way around and then you're just going to cut corner to corner and that that's all you're going to do so we'll grab that rotating mat And we're going to line it up. So what I'm cutting corner to corner, I'm looking at, I want my cutter to go right there at, or the ruler to go right there at the sew intersection the where it intersects right here. So I want my cutter to cut right here on here and then here on and here. And again, you could use your mat and okay. line that room. You don't have to, up. but you can use your mat and line that up. If you're wanting that accuracy. So I'm gonna line it up, just so that we have it lined up. Here and here. And that's the cool thing about it, is you don't have to. With the mm -hmm. templates, you don't need to. All right, so I'm just gonna make it where it lines up on that line. It shifted a little bit. And then you're just gonna cut. Again, this is a system, these blocks are going to be all bias. So if you don't like doing bias blocks, then just go ahead and um, not do the four. So look, my fabric or, moved a little bit, the, don't do the four. Yep. Or start your fabric. Yeah, just start your or really start good. your fabric. Yep. It's all about starching that fabric. Yep. <laughs> and we were talking last week um, with Suzette and one of the three stitchettes, mm -hmm. if you all remember them. And I filmed her several years ago talking about a starch method to make your own starch from potato vodka. And she said she has tested all the different starches that are out there and she likes her potato vodka the best. So I have a video on how to make uh, potato vodka starch if you're interested in doing that. So yeah, it came in again right a little bit over so it'd be like six and five eighths I guess is what that one is six and five eighths is what it came out now even though you have bias on the edges here 
in here, there's no bias here. There's no bias. So that's why I can do a pretty good fingerprint yeah. press right here because <laughs> I'm not stretching nothing in the middle of this block. But the other blocks, even though we've got no, we have no bias on the outside, you have lots of bias right here in the middle. So just be careful yeah. when, you're, when you're finger pressing these or stretch or ironing those. All right. So Val, do we have questions or comments? Is everybody enjoying this? Are you seeing the value of these templates? Lots so we have a lot of, of hearts. Everybody's giving okay. you hearts. There's a lot of Good. comments. How many people um, we got? Definitely give us a lot of hearts if you want us to keep up with this and if this was the style that you were expecting to see and wanting to see because we are getting our lineup for the next Tuesdays for projects that Lisa and Linda will be doing. They will be alternating different topics, different things. Yeah. So we're excited about that. Mm -hmm. We do want to announce the winner. Before I announce the oh. winner of the extra large mat and the cutter, we will just give you a heads up that on this post, you need to comment and tag three friends. So in this post that we are currently on right now, just go ahead and tag, you guys have been commenting, just tag three of your friends. That puts you in for the drawing that we will announce next week. And it will be a Elna Star sewing machine. So we are giving away the 30 by 60 mat today, which I gave Lisa the name. So Lisa will be announcing that here shortly. And I'm excited and I hope that they're online because I, I haven't been watching the names to see, but um, she's gonna announce that right now. But just remember before we go off this live or even after I tag the three friends yeah. in this post to get into the drawing for the winning of the Elna Star. And we will announce that next Friday when we do our Friday wrap up. So Linda will have all that information next week on right. Friday to who won the sewing machine. But without a further ado, Linda, I'll let you right. go ahead and announce and, the winner. And I don't think they can tag in this post now. I think after the live is over, you can go tag. And tagging, some people asked about it yesterday. The way that I know to tag is you start typing in somebody's name. I can type in Lisa, and up will pop Lisa Gifford, mm -hmm. Lisa so-and-so, Lisa so-and-so, Lisa yeah. so-and-so. If Lisa Gifford is the one I want, I click on it, and then Lisa shows up highlighted. Mm -hmm. Now, you could do a hashtag, too, but I like just being able to have their name pop up. Yeah. So do that three times with people that you know, and we really don't want three people already in the group because we are trying to broaden our audience. <laughs> there are millions of quilters out there that don't have a clue who we are, and the whole point of this is we want them to know what we have because we know what's the best. You guys hopefully think so too. <laughs> we want other people to say, oh my God, this existed and I didn't I know, know about it. So tagging your friends that don't know about us that mm -hmm. aren't in the group, that's kind of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And the 60 by 30 mat, that is the huge mat. This table, it's bigger than this table. Yeah. So a 60 inch by 30 inch mat. Valerie gave it to me, Linda, Lisa. Lisa. I'm holding so, it in my well, hand. I'll answer to Lisa or Linda or Laura, my sister, because I was always called Laura growing up. But I just passed it on to Lisa. So Lisa is going to announce We're gonna the winner. We're going to say it together. Ready? Oh, okay. One, two, three. Cammy Lynn. Lynn. We have another <laughs> Lynn, another L. So Cammy Lynn, so tiny, congratulations. Val. I think you're going to have a hard time blowing <laughs> that one up. <laughs> Cammy, so, oh, wait, wait. Cammy, Cammy Lynn. Lynn. You have won our 60 by 30 cutting Woo! mat. You are going to be in love. <laughs> Those of you that have our 60 by 30 inch cutting mat, give us a thumbs up, hearts, whatever, if you love that mat like I do. Yep. I actually have four of them. That's so much I like that <laughs> mat. So actually, Five, I have one. I have, I have five because I have one on my, I've got the large elite table and the 60 by 30 mat yes, comes in the elite table. So, yes, all right, guys. Miss Lisa we, oh. uh, Ballard, she said, I share through Facebook Messenger with the word share. Is this wrong? Uh, not a question for me. I don't Yeah, know. you can do that. You can share it on Facebook Messenger. Okay. Yeah, uh, share yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I think there are a bunch. Too. I think there are a bunch of ways to share or tag. So you guys let us know, too, because you know a lot more about Facebook than So I do. wanted Linda to go over this weekend sale real quick. We wanted Ooh. to wish everybody from my family, from my mom, my brother, my girls, and everybody else here at Martelli have a very safe and careful Labor Day um, weekend. Still come on tomorrow, Val. Um, yeah. <laughs> Well, I won't be on tomorrow. You won't be on tomorrow. So from, uh, from, from me and my family, I hope you guys have a very safe um, Labor Day weekend. And we will be back. I will be back next week. I know the girls will be up here for a Friday wrap-up tomorrow. I will not be here because of the sale that Linda is getting ready to talk about. She's I will be downstairs be nonstop tomorrow. I'm trying to find So I hope you guys enjoy it. the weekend. And, and I'm post. trying to find the post about our sale. Um, I don't have the details. If you Everything will, will be up to 40% yeah. off. 
It'll start <laughs> tomorrow. It will go through um, Monday. Monday night at midnight. Okay. So up everything is up to 40%. So just go on the website, whatever Except you want. These, are these? Now let's let's go over this. Yeah, so these are that. not going to be on the website yeah, until next week. Well, they're on the website. So if you would like to purchase these in the link above that they have created for this post are the links to buy these. So if you would like to buy the Crazy 8s, if you want them to put the order in before next week, go ahead and click that link. Once we get them, um, once the sale is over, we will then put them online next week. But the best bet to get the Crazy 8s this week is go ahead and click that link above. You guys have a little bit of a jump start on that. Um, mm -hmm. One, for appreciation for taking the time to wash us, and two, because we have a very limited supply. So yeah, we didn't want to put them on sale. Time, oh, yeah. Very time, time consuming. consuming. Yeah. Yes. They're yep. not easy. Yeah, Floyd and Everett are working like again, crazy to cut these out for you. Thank you, D. Kirby. They are, yep. they are amazing. Yeah, yep, mm -hmm. absolutely. And D. one more thing, Miss Delagio, I really messed up your name. Stephanie sent it to me <laughs> phonetically, so I hope I still didn't do it wrong. <laughs> Delagio. So uh, I am sorry for messing up that name. So oh, thank you it. very much for joining oh, us. Goodness. Thank you, guys. We hope you like Creating with Martelli. We've got a bunch of fun things planned. We'll be putting them on the calendar um, probably early next week, so you can start looking forward to them. We have several projects we're going we're to be at the sewing machine, sewing and making. So yep, you'll get to see making. those. And also we my thought daughter. We have time to make something today. but My daughter no. just texted me to tell everybody there is no code. You will just click on those links and you will see the 30% discount upon purchasing. No okay, code perfect. is needed. Just click on the link and you will see the discounts. Fantastic. And again, after this, I'll go on to the computer and I will post in this post or maybe another post all the items that we talked about with links so that you want to see what those sale options are to take advantage because we have some really good products that work so well that we don't really spend a lot of time on. So mm -hmm. I want to make sure to post those links for you so you can take advantage of the sale prices. Yep. Thank All you right. guys. We hope you like this and we'll see you next time. See you tomorrow.